We, you don't want to do an intro again? No, no, no. Botch job, botch job. Welcome to the Nerrington Post. I'm Walter. Will. Senpai. And we're talking um, the other day's Nintendo Direct. Senpai, but before we, uh, I realized this botch going on, Senpai, we were talking about how you were upset there was no Fire Emblem news, but they started with Fire Emblem news. Well, yeah. like, I didn't realize it was going on until a little bit later. So when I started watching my phone, because I was still at work, uh, I didn't get to it until they start showcasing Advance Wars. So Which was, I didn't yeah, find out. Too. Yeah. And I didn't find out about um, sort of the Fire Emblem bit until after until after it was done. And I was strolling through Twitter and Nintendo was like, Fire Emblem Warriors. Again, I was just like, bro, what? Yeah, it's Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses for Chads. Because moving around tiles is for fucking nerds, man. Let me hack it's, and slash. The thing that gets me slightly excited about this, because uh, the first one was pretty terrible. Granted, I have more issues with the character selection than anything. Well, you got out of anyway. this time, so. Well, the She's thing that makes me really, the thing that makes me excited for it is like it's in the middle of, um, like the time skip. So I'm curious to see like how they're gonna be progressing. If this is gonna be canon, if it's not gonna be canon, probably not. Pray up. But, um, the main thing that I found like super cool was that. Flood, Dimitri have their we- their sacred weapons with them. But uh, El- Eligar doesn't because she doesn't get into way later because that's a made up statue weapon. It was like synthetically made by those who slid in the dark. So I like that little nut, uh, that little like uh, call out to lore. Uh, so I'm excited to see if this is going to be canon or not. Plus, I saw Hubert. Hubert looks like an emo bitch, and I love him. Problem with uh, these Nintendo Muso games. Is that they run on the Switch, and we'll be having a nice, cool 20 to 25 frames per second. Yeah. But I also play uh, Band of the Hawk, so, and that was terrible. So I don't mind having shitty one as long as portable. Did you finally play um, Persona 5 Strikers? No. No, I still... I think I'm just going to watch a YouTube on the story. That's I still a don't. good Muso game, though, man. Well, you the were way telling they incorporate me more... the elements into the combat, it's great. It's the my favorite Musou game to play. the The story's whatever. It's, it's not great one? for uh, Persona Five Strikers. Strikers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just downloaded that because it was free on PS Plus. Hell yeah, man! I'm gonna pay what? That. Yeah, it w- it was free last month on PS Plus. Fuck you! Uh, <laughs> did you, you missed it? I think I did. Yeah, double check, but I'm pretty sure it's not available anymore. But yeah, it was on PS Plus, so I picked it up, and I'll eventually play it. Yeah, it's a great Musou mm-hmm. to play. Well, I really liked Age of Calamity, so I was like, yeah, I'll give Strikers a shot. I like per- I like the 20 hours I put into Persona 5. Oh, UFC 4 and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep are free. Oh, uh, for this month? Yeah, along with uh, Planet Coaster Console Edition. Hmm. I might fuck around with Tiny Tina. Because uh, the new one they're coming up with looks slightly less annoying. Yeah, they're, the other games. they've released all the information about the six classes. And also a nice revelation, you could multi-class in that game so you could mix and match, which is very exciting, which you've never really been able to do that between the different... Because there are locked down to characters in the previous Borderlands games, their skills, so... Yeah. You could double down on melee skills. You could uh, double down on. You could have two pet characters. I'm ex- I'm excited for that game. Make a spell sword person. But yeah, um, you mentioned Advance Wars. It's the year of strategy games. Are you excited for the Advance Wars one plus two reboot camp coming April fourth? No, I am excited for Triangle Strategy. That's all I'm like looking forward to. Then I'm gonna be like digging my hands on for at least 50 hours were you not an advance wars guy no actually which was kind of weird because um which is kind of weird because you figure like i would be into it but um yeah because if you like fire emblem it's the same team the thing is is when i was little i think the fact that it was like world related just didn't appeal to me at all um 
and then next to it I see uh, a person with like a sword and a dragon in the background. So I was like, oh, I'd rather play that. I'd rather play the one with the dragon and the sword. But I th- I think so what would Fire Emblem? Is that Fire Emblem has waifus and Advance Wars doesn't. Fire Emblem had a big problem with waifus until awakening because then because the paralogs were not great to be honest with you until awakening that's when they start putting all the money into making those things last you a long while and events Wars does have waifu it has a goth check that i like that's not until like the ds one or the sequel no idea okay Advance wars goth check let me see is she a cutie? I mean, I like her, but my taste is questionable. Well, everyone likes goth girls. That's true. Until they start getting uh, makeup all over your crotch. Hey, oh, hey, hey, yo, oh, oh. yeah, No Mansky, hey. You guys excited for No Mansky looking ugly on the Switch? So I'm surprised there's not a cloud title. It might be. I mean, <laughs> Title. Well, it looks yeah. a little gross. It might not be, so who knows? But yeah, because if that's not a cloud title, um, I'm not excited for it. <clears throat> yeah, it's on everything already. Looks better for sure, and will likely run better. Exactly. But so. that's cool for the people who only have switches out there, uh, getting the worst version of a game. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was excited for that game initially, but then when it came out to be like. This is more like a survival-y game, and you're just fucking punching trees and rocks. Nah, I'm, I'm good. I want to fly around in space and shoot shit. Not the other I like stuff. This, I like the space sections, and then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm there with you. Finding out it was like more survival stuff, just let me not care for it. Yeah, and I hear it's much improved, but the things that they added on where they triple down on their survival elements... And like the base building and all that stuff, which makes it even less appealing to me. We made it better by making the things you hate more. Yeah. Exactly. But the things I hate, I hate very specific things. That direct made me like even Puerto more... Puerto Ricans! <laughs> Ooh. God. I'm kidding, um, I love West Side Story. He got an Oscar nomination. I'm Team PR, baby. Um, the Jets wouldn't have me, that's for sure. That did... <laughs> That direct made me even more excited for Kirby. Like I'm super psyched for it. Yeah, I'm oh, excited. Hey. I will say, I agree. I gun excited. jumpers, you're jumping the gun here. It's the middle of the show. We gotta talk about Mario Strikers Battle League. No, we don't. He, yeah, no, he, we he, don't. no, 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 no. Wait, here's the thing. So I was excited when I saw that, but then you said it in the chat, and then I remembered how shitty golf was, and yeah. I was like, Ugh, I'm gonna wait for reviews to come out before I buy this. Mario. Because I I would play it, and if it's good, I'll buy it. But I'm I'm not going to be duped like I was with Mario Golf. I'm going to wait for reviews. You know, Mario Strikers is generally regarded as, like, the best of the Mario sports games. But, yeah, this the whole Switch era track record of Nintendo of just, like, we're releasing 80% of the game and then we'll release a bunch of free DLC later, which is seems like the same shit they're going to do with with, uh, Mario Strikers. It's a weird, it's a weird way to keep game, uh, games relevant and not come up with new games. Which is exactly why they made that Mario Kart announcement. But we'll get to that. Yeah. But yeah, Kirby, that's that's that gets me really excited. I like seeing the gameplay just being very well fleshed out for um, open world, and that your abilities now have levels that you can improve. Um, the big mouth doesn't really... freak you out. The uh, tlo- uh, throat goat now. <laughs> no, I find it funny. Um, so far, I find it funny so far. Like Twitter has been having a blast with it. Like I think one of my favorite versions of that is uh, Eva Unit One running around with Kirby, like half eating it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for this game. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think Kirby and Triangle Strategy is the only thing that called out I actually care about. For the direct, uh, Splatoon three hype? Yeah, you are one of those weirdos who loves Splatoon three. No, I, I'm a or same person. Splatoon, yeah. No, I will just. I'm gonna borrow my friends that we can do the story and then forget about it. 
Yeah, they they showed more of Splatoon three coming this summer. The specifically the Salmon Run mode, which was their Horde mode, which you know, I get the appeal of Splatoon, but I don't like it. I like the aesthetic. I like the aesthetics. I like the platforming. I don't like the yeah. core gameplay. See, that, that's the thing of playing the uh, campaigns for Splatoon two. I was. I wanted like a third person shooter, but then that that campaign is straight up like a 3D platformer with some shooting. Which I enjoy. I love Which, 3D platformers. That's my favorite version of platformers. So I, I enjoy it a lot. And I bought Splatoon 2 full price nice. just to play the story. And then that's I did right. it right away. It was a Call of Duty situation for me. I think that's the closest thing I can relate to a Call of Duty player ever. I liked uh, Splatoon. I didn't play the first one, but I got Splatoon 2 on my Switch, and I enjoyed the multiplayer aspect, the story I didn't give a shit about. I mean, the story is just there to get you through, teach you how to do um, platforming, but it's fun. I like the music a lot. Um, I like the character design. I like the character designs a lot. I just don't like the main gameplay. I like the side gameplay, which is the story. Gotcha. It's Nintendo's biggest new franchise. People love it. I'd say we're lukewarm is our general consensus. Yeah. And you don't want to keep your uh, seafood lukewarm, gentlemen. I'm. I for a second there I thought you were talking about seafood, and then I realized what you just did. Yeah. Um. The the next news in the direct uh, tickled me a little bit. Front Mission First remake. I thought that was uh, funny. Front Mission is one of my favorite strategy RPG franchises. And my, my problem, though, with it, why I wasn't excited, because after years of Square Enix floundering with the franchise, <laughs> with shitty little offshoots, they're finally going back to Front Mission traditional, but they're going traditional traditional by remaking the first game, which was remade for the 3DS um actually not 3ds the remade for the ds it was also ported to the ps1 after it was originally started on the snes so this is a game that's been like remade three times already Mm -hmm. Uh, but i I probably won't get it because i still have my ds and my ds version um but afterwards they made a non-announcement of in the future front mission 2 remake also happening so that's what I'm excited for is the Front Mission 2 remake since I never played that. It was on the PS1 and never released in North America, which is a very classic thing to do in the 90s. Talking about not released in America, a live, what is a live, live a alive. life? Yeah. I'm actually really excited for that. Never heard of that game. Uh, and I looked up some, some more about it and... It's eight different time periods with eight different characters, and each one of them played differently, and they have different play styles and gameplay. But they're like, I think they follow a cohesive storyline at the end. Yeah, it gets me really excited. Apparently, it's like super well like regarded. Yeah, it's one of the, those legendary Japan. JRPGs like um, Bahamut Lagoon. Is mm-hmm. that? Yeah, and. It's it's great that we're finally getting those over. Like, uh, Seiken Densetsu 3 finally came over. Um, I'm excited for that. I used to uh, play that card back in my Yu-Gi-Oh days because I thought it was a pretty girl. Turns out it's a boy. Yeah. Yeah, front mission. I'm, I'm glad. I, I'd rather have, like, a new game with updated strategy RPG mechanics, kind of like how XCOM... Or Valkyria Chronicles kind of updated the format, but it's it's one of those announcements of well, it's better than literally nothing. Mm-hmm. It's not what I want, but it's better than nothing, which is well, a, hold a on. sad state. Well, hold on. We have Event Wars, uh, Front Mission, Triangle Strategy. Um, Metal Slug Tactics. Yeah, that weird X Men card game. Marvel's Midnight Suns. Game. Yeah, and a possible rumor of a remake of Final Fantasy Tactics. 
I think it's just a remake. Eh. I don't know, it's definitely not going to be a full-blown remake like um, Live Alive. I think it's just going to be like Chrono Cross. Well, all I'm saying is like that's at least six like tactical RPGs being released this year. Are, are they making a slow comeback? Um, they've always what? existed in the indie space for a while. You had games like... Um... Nobody, nobody cares about those. Everyone cares about them. People who make games care about them. It's like that exactly. quote about um, the Velvet Underground. Like they didn't, they sold like shit. But everybody who bought a Velvet Underground album started a band. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> or, and XCOM also. XCOM was huge. The XCOM yeah, was that, definitely like... the revival of was the start of the revival of the strategy that sort of strategy game. Well, I'm talking about more like, like you know how, I want to say like 2012, when Street Fighter 4 came out, and then like, we were just getting fighting game after fighting game, like coming out, and fighting games were kind of making a comeback. Uh, I would like that to happen for tactical RPGs. I, I think it'd be tons of fun, because then we can just look more into not only applying the quality of life things that have evolved throughout the years, but also just bringing in like brand new ideas and classes and things like that. We're in it, baby. This is the revival. I mean, we got Disgaea 6 last year, but no one gave a shit. Because I don't like those Nippon Ichi strategy RPGs. They are complete grind fests. Even my friend that's into them was telling me, it's like, yeah, like, it's a little... They they lean in super hard in the, in the big numbers. So, like, right yeah. from, like, level 5, you're making a million damage, which it doesn't feel significant. Oh, anymore. the max level is uh, 9,999. I, I played the hell out of Disgaea 1, and then, like, playing Disgaea 2, I never beat the story campaign just because of, like, what am I doing? What is this? I'm, am I even having fun? No, I'm just watching numbers get bigger. This is stupid. But uh, I, feel, I, I feel I feel you there. I spent a ton of time on Iron World because it's like it's a thing I could complete and it could make me stronger and it make the number go up. Yeah. And then I was super overpowered by Chapter Four. I want to say. I like how that game handles thieves. I think it's really fun that it steals other things other than items. Like, hey, I want to steal your sight. Here's a st here's the blind status. I think that's imaginative and fun. Tactics did it first, though. Yep. Everything comes oh, back shit, to tactics. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You guys excited for a uh, Disney Speedstorm? That's so stupid. Hey, man, it's uh, you gotta get <laughs> into the crossover and kart racing, man, because Nintendo won't do it themselves. No, apparently they won't. No, I got Chocobo Racing coming out. Yeah. Cloud as your first DLC character to fill the DLC. See, mm -hmm. that's why it's gonna score well. He's in a season pass that you have to get to level 62. So, fuck that, dude. Keep fuck forgetting that, that Chuckle Racing had levels. Not the original. Not the original? No. I mean, racers had stats that you could tweak when you made a custom racer. Uh, okay. Beat the story mode, but so that's oh, kind of what I remember. Because that's kind of what I remember. Because um, like I think I talked about this. I didn't roll with a PlayStation until PlayStation Two, and then I bought a bunch of like pirated games, and some of them were in languages I couldn't read. And Chocobo Racing was a really bad version of it I had, but. It was there, and I remember RPG elements being included into the racing game. I just couldn't remember what. Yeah, the, uh, it's not a good game, but it is a favorite amongst me and my uh, childhood friends. And that's why it's going to score well, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, no, that game was ass. I love it, though. I feel that there's this, uh, I forget the name of the game, but it's, um, you're just going to, it's a 64 game, and you're just going around destroying shit. And you get robots, and you, the main gameplay is so you have you have a little guy that gets into different demolition car um, vehicles and break shit. I think it's made by Rare. I don't know. Uh, I senpai, uh, we're Gundam maniacs. So, uh, any interest in SD Gundam Battle Alliance? <laughs> 
No. Because it has my least favorite line of uh, Gundams, which is SD. Hey, man, what, what about uh, Super Robot Wars? They're, those things are SD. I Do you ever play those games? Appealing. I don't find it appealing. I like I like the flashiness of it, uh, the over the top of it, but I whenever I look at the designs move, I'm just like, no, I can't get in them. What what I'm into with it is that it's a Gundam game that's action based. That's not one of those shitty uh, versus battles games. I just want I want to pilot around Bar- Barbados and smash dudes with a hammer. Is that too much to ask? That's what I want. Like I would even take like the. Um... The Gundam Warrior games that came out, where it's, it's pretty much Dynasty Warriors by Gundam, I would take one of those again. Yeah, and me I, too. <laughs> I had a lot. Of fun, I had a lot of fun with those um, back in the day. I want. I that's, want those back. Get the license back. Uh, Omega I still Force. think that like that's considered one of the best uh, Dynasty Warrior games, just in general. The Gundam ones. You know what I want? I want to have a either take your pick: Macross, Robotech, Gundam. I don't care whichever one you want to have. Uh, Get the fuck out of here with that Robotech shit. Robotech is great, man. Um, fuck Harmony Gold. This is a Macross podcast. Rest down. Anyways, um, I want to have that, but tactical RPG. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. Well, you got Super Robot Wars, dude. Yeah, but better. There, I think there I also is like, the... like a turn-based RPG, but it is again SD Gundam. What am? What is that? Let me look it up because I I'd be think okay, so. I'd be okay with that. Like I would like to see a neon Zeon, uh, neon Zeon, um Check Steam because I know armor. it was a big deal because it was like the first officially released, like Western release on PC for like one of those Gundam games. I'm uh, playing Final Fantasy Tactics content in Final Fantasy XIV and playing very suboptimally because I'm talking right now. Uh, I was talking to Billy um, a little bit. Billy on I... Guardians, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm actually kind of enjoying myself with yeah, it. Yeah, it's a great game, man. Me and Will don't just talk out of our asses when we hype up a game. That's true. We really don't. Mine. Because normally our mind. tastes don't align, but on this one it did. It's true. It is. I don't mind telling true. you. I don't mind telling you guys that you were right. Like I don't mind it at all. I just don't like admitting I was wrong. That's fair. Also, I want to say I've been playing the shit out of Dying Light Two, and oh, I've seen. and uh, it deserves a much higher score than a seventy-seven. Uh, Walter, you got robbed. Well, it's all uh, subjective. A lot of people found it repetitive and whatnot. The combat. Those Quest. people are stupid. It's like a situation where, like, um, you get a wealth of options when it comes to what you can do with combat, but there's definitely like the one that beats them all all out. We'll talk about later. We'll talk when we get when yeah. we go into what we're playing. We'll talk about it. You guys excited for Star Wars Force Unleashed uh, coming April twentieth when it's clearly uh, the a remaster of the Wii version. <laughs> The, that's when I like lost and just like oh wait you remastered the Wii version the hit for the motion controls man you have to have the motion yeah, options no you don't it's you don't. Nintendo <laughs> Oh Numo <laughs> once said he can't imagine them making a Zelda game that doesn't have motion controls back in What's the Wii the game? days um, well there was the name of the game Super Robot Wars uh, Super Robot Wars um, the one I'm talking about isn't Super Robot Wars though it's on Steam. What? Check Steam. Just you type in Gundam on Steam. It'll be like the first thing. Gundam. Gundam. FD Gundam G Generations. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. Yeah, check this out. Yeah, I, I'm interested. It's on my Steam wish list. Just waiting for that sale, daddy It's a strategy game that more forces you to think. Okay, strategy game. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the wish list. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, um, seeing that Star Wars Force Unleashed thing, it's like, oh, cool. The uh, the ugliest version of the game on the Switch again. Great, great. But the next thing they announced, which is everyone thought it was gonna be at uh, the, a PlayStation announcement, but Chrono Cross: The Radical Dreamers Edition. Did you guys play That's... Chrono Cross? Yeah, that game sucks ass. 
Fuck you, you sack of shit. I Trigger is I Trigger's overrated. Trigger, you're wrong. Cross is great, man. Cross is underrated. I thought that game was shit. Oh, fuck you, I dude. See, the battle I system's way more interesting. I think this is just gonna be. I think this is gonna be like a Final Fantasy VI situation for us, cause I fucking love Final Fantasy VI, and you oh, think it's six overrated. Six is dog shit. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's a similar situation. I think Cross is shit. Um, You'll never. Agree. Yeah, I just think. It, yeah, I, yeah. I I think this is all on you, man. Will, uh, do yourself a favor. Play Chrono Trigger, and then maybe play Chrono Cross. <laughs> Because those are I'm fantastic like, RPGs. I'm hearing conflicting stuff here, so I don't know who to believe. Chrono Trigger. It's uh. Chrono Tri Play Chrono Trigger for sure. Yeah, it is uh, considered one of the best RPGs like Ever just made. made in general. Yeah, and it's fun. Um, some people put that as their favorite Final Fantasy game because, by all intents and purposes, it could be a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, Chrono, and oh. Chrono, yeah um, Chrono Trigger was originally made for the SNES, and then Chrono Cross is a sequel uh, that was made on the, for the PS1 and has different uh, mechanics to it. I take it Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers, that's the re-release? Yeah, Radical Dreamers, also part of... Oh my god, I can't believe I'm dead. Part of the what makes the uh, Radical Dreamers edition legendary, it... So... On, like, I think it was the Satellaview or some random-ass, like, console that failed in the 90s. They released, an, like, a sequel to Chrono Trigger called Radical Dreamers, and it was a text adventure game. <laughs> and it never came out in the West, and it bridged the gap between uh, Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. But now it's finally being officially translated and brought over and packaged with Chrono Cross. Got it. So it's worth the getting for that, and I will definitely be picking it up on Steam, where I could get AI mods to have the uh, background smoothed out. I'm Cause... reading. In a, I'm reading reviews for that uh, Gundam game that you talked about, and literally all of them are positive because, like, I love Gundam, I love Gundam, and the not recommended ones was like, if you like Gundam, you know, like this game. <laughs> Do, do any of the like reviews talk them. about the gameplay at all? Repeated, uh, repetitive quest, and also like a really weird like quality of life things. Like in order to do even do like a normal attack, you have to do like four clicks. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it, it might be a situation. Box trash. Yeah, it might be a situation where like it, it's definitely selling it to you in the animations and just Gundam itself. Sometimes but, that's I know, I mean, worth it on its own, though, because, I mean... Sometimes, that's all you need. sometimes you just need a big robot, and chicks take big robots. Uh, beg beggars can't be choosers. We'll take any Gundam game we can get. Yup. That's not one of the versus extreme boost games, God, or whatever the hell they're called. But yeah, it's so pretty, yeah. but so dog shit. Yeah, Chrono Cross is probably my, personally my biggest announcement from the... Uh, Direct. The thing is, uh, I'm probably not going to play it because I don't normally play a lot of those old RPGs unless it's Final Fantasy Tactics. Like, I replayed Final Fantasy VIII recently because I was editing, like, a an old podcast of me and my friends being drunk and talking about Final Fantasy VIII. But yeah, Chrono Cross, I love it. I might pick it up. But yeah, uh... Next thing they showed was Kirby, The Forgotten Lands, which everyone here is excited for except for me because I'm not the biggest Kirby guy. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it I'm, out. I'm, I'm excited. I, I've been digging these... Um, I've been digging the gimmicks that I've been giving Kirby. Like, if it's just a normal Kirby game and it's like, it will be it will be doable, but like, Kirby plus gimmick... They, they've been really fun so far, and uh, I haven't been one where I haven't had I haven't played a Kirby game in a while where I can be like I could have been okay one because I just enjoy myself so much playing them, mm -hmm. and you just get to throw good things. So right? what's the more to like? I love Basically. that they used uh, the the term for it is um, 
mouth load. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, it's mouth load mode. I'm like, oh, that's not sexual. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Big mouth strikes again. That's right, baby. Um... Good old Kirby. Based on everything that's been announced so far, does that seem like your summer loving game? Is that the game of the summer? Will it be? Kirby? Probably. No, uh, Wii Sports. <laughs> no, no, Wii Sports. Yeah, it, no, it is fucking Wii Sports. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, no, 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 no I agree. It is, it is Wii Sports. You're going you to spend your, time, your summertime playing Wii Sports? Get the fuck out of here. You're going to spend $40 no. on a game that was free with the Wii? No, I'm gonna spend zero dollars on that thing. I'm not gonna buy it. But it were were you talking? Were you using Royal you as an audience or you as me and Billy? No, you personally. When am I? Oh. When do I care about it's the pretty... people? Yeah, true. You don't care. Yeah. Uh... The care. Vox Populi can eat a dick. We're, this is a one percenter podcast. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, no, so Game for the Summer, probably, depending on how replayable tr- Triangle Strategy is. Now, hold on a second. Everyone has a different idea of when summer starts. When does summer start for you guys? Triangle Strategy comes out in March, man. Uh, I'm, I'm talking... So that's spring. I'm talking that's about spring. sweating. June, July, so, August. Okay. Uh, June, June, July, August? Yeah. Because if Working we were going to say sweat. May... If we were going to say summer starts in May, I was going to say Forspoken. But if we're going like June, July, August, as of right now, the only thing I'm really excited about for that um, window is probably uh, Mario Strikers. Because that's really the only thing that's been announced for summer. But obviously that'll change yeah. once E3 happens. I mean, Kirby is supposed to come out summer. Same with Splatoon three it might be curvy or i might just i might just be jerking it during summer hell yeah and dude not play, and not play video games More that's the way to do it man yeah. speaking of uh sports they showed they finally showed off switch gameplay of mlb the show 22 coming out april 5th and that looks like ass dude it's on switch it, <laughs> like it always looks worse than you'd think it does though like you're kind of like, oh, this might actually be good, and like, nope, looks like shit. Even if they would have just gone with a different art direction, I think it would have been okay. But no, it's like, no, we gotta keep in the same throughout the three different consoles, even though they're not the same console. Like even um, Front Mission Remake, which is a remake of a remake of a game that started off on SNES. I was thinking, this game does not look good. Uh, but that's, I think it's purely an art direction thing where I'm used to the art direction of Front Mission 4 and 5. And then, like, seeing that weird griminess. I don't know, man. Switch games are ugly. We can all agree on that. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, we touched upon this earlier, or was this uh, pre botch? Uh, Clono- Clonoa Fantasy Reverie series oh, coming out July 8th. Uh, I am so excited. That's the only time I, I think. I actually went like no way like out of outably uh because i love clonoa yeah. um Clono- i played the shit out of it on my game boy advance clono is gonna be in the bandai namco metaverse baby i want to see um Kim- I- kimpachi Kim- uh, it's already uh, kimpachi no i want to see hey hachi in that clonoa costume dude um See, I played Clono 2 on PS2. Mm-hmm. I love that game, so I'm excited that it's being re-released. But I, I tried playing the Game Boy Advance games, but couldn't get into them. So we, ha- hard. So we have an opposite arc mm-hmm. with our love of Clono. They're hard because, like, um, I was a I, I was a Game Boy kid through and through. Like, I always had it on me, so. Uh, being able to play Telenoa on the go was like super, it was just super cool to me because I was a dumb little fucking kid. I thought it was like, oh, this guy is like Sonic. It's not. Um, <laughs> and I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought the colors were really pretty. I liked the gameplay. It was just like grabbing and toss and uh, jumping around. And yeah, but looking back, no, not, not, not a great game, but just good memories <laughs> with it. I'm super excited. 
Yeah, Klonoa, Klonoa 2 is a legit fun platformer. Yeah. Cause, and I'm saying that as someone who doesn't like platforms. <laughs> like, it, it's a good time. Part of me, I think, just really misses 2.5 D. Right? It is charming. They got, you got a lot of 2.5 D in the indie space, baby. The thing is, it's like... Um, what the fuck was I that? Wanna, I want to I wanna be able to do more indie games, but like literally every single indie game I've liked that I enjoy... Um, it's a little too, it's really edge lordy and i think that just might be my cup of tea when it comes to indie games ukulele I think, baby i wanted to like it i couldn't get into it the second one is better the one that's 2d yeah the one that's like 2.5 d ish i'll uh, check that out I, that was a free i have that on epic game store because that was like a free game a couple weeks ago it's like the something in the labyrinth or laboratory someone with an l Never-ending spiral, I think. I don't know, I'm making shit up. The never-ending spiral sounds like it could be a industrial band album. It's someone trying to rip off the downward spiral. Uh, again, ugly versions of games. Portal Companion Collection. <laughs> Coming to Switch. Oh my god, my party. All their healers are dead. Now they're back. Uh, uh, live alive which you know we talked about earlier I'll, i'm definitely gonna check that out yeah that, that looks cool looks good but i hope it's one of those things that has a good reputation but like there's actually a reason they didn't bring it over because it's like the gameplay systems are obtuse and it's just fucking not fun to play but hopefully it's actually good and lives up to the hype but yeah, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is the next thing they reveal. There's a network test February 18th through 20th. And one of the classic uh, Wii Sports things, Golf, isn't coming out at launch of the game. That's going to be launched later. I was like, dude, how... Like, that's why a lot of people play Wii Sports, other than bowling. Golf and bowling are the two big Wii Sports games. But again, I... They could wait to... I don't know, man. Nintendo with their delayed content releases, man, really annoys... It's annoying. Really stupid. I was not impressed with the Direct. I gave it a C, maybe yeah. a C, C+. Plus. Whoa, you're giving a Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival a, a, a C? Yeah, you're right. A C-. Minus. C-, 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 minus. C-, 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 dog. Those, ga- those games are fun. But they're they're doing a... Um, oh, what the fuck is it? A Just Dance sort of thing where like, hey, uh, hey pay you a subscription so service and you have access to all the past songs. Hey, what's going on, guys? My computer decided to freeze, so... I didn't know you guys were not talking and then I heard a really high pitch noise in my ears. And uh, I really... Oh, I'm not talking anymore. Well, the high pitch was we were squealing for a Taiko no Tatsujin uh, Rhythm Festival. <laughs> Did you play those games back in the day? Did you play Donkey Konga? I played Donkey Konga because uh, because of the memes. I thought it was funny. Um, you like the Ugga a, on the drums? I had, yeah. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was fun. Um, and then my hands started hoiding a lot. Um, and then my friend, we had a DK challenge back in the back back home when we were playing Smash Bros. and it was just uh, how far can you get uh, get in the tournament while playing Donkey Kong with the bungos. Nice. We got one. We got one dude actually win the the local tournament, which was kind of nice. It's a no for me, dog. Yeah. Um, triangle strategy, March fourth. The uh, the prologue demo. I always love this sort of demo where you get the start of the game. They have the first three chapters of Triangle Strategy, and your save transfers to the full game, which is hella dope, so, man. I'm so excited for that game. I, th- I think um, I'm gonna be texting my friend and see like which options they're picking. That way, I can like switch differently. Um, Do you have but, the prologue demo uh, installed? Yes. Um, I played it the first time, and I think we were talking about this in a previous podcast, just like the quality of life things were just really shitty. But then um, with the patches they made after the first demo? That's Yeah, and they made, they made it better from my understanding, but I haven't checked it out since the 
this is the original one. So I think I'll dive into that later next week yeah. or or something like that because I'm so excited for this game. Yeah, it sucks that it comes out like what a week or after two weeks Elden after Ring. Elsa and the Ring. Yeah. So I think Triangle maybe, Strategy is going to be maybe Elden Ring will be a bomb and you can play it. You know that's not going to happen. I know yeah. it's not going to happen, but I, yeah. you never know. I know I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I do know, and that game is gonna rock my shit. Yeah, um, for, for me personally, go ahead. Uh, oh no, I'm just because Elden Ring comes out, I'm gonna wait for the Steam version of Triangle Strategy since, you know, all those Switch exclusives come to Steam eventually. <laughs> so I'll, yeah. I'll just wait for six months for that. So I, it gives me time to really get get into Elden Ring. I I've been getting into the habit of. Uh getting out of my room because my work computer is in my room because mm -hmm. i live with two roommates um so after i'm done with work i usually step out to the living room and mess around with my computer i have my playstation out here so i usually don't go to bed until like midnight and then i have an hour to myself to cool down and i think that's when i'm going to be playing triangle, triangle strategy before bed yeah yeah no I i'm super excited for the game um like, I don't think... The, the only thing I'm slightly scared about is that... AIDS? Regard... No, I was going to say choking on, my, uh, choking on my own puke. That's terrifying to me. <laughs> but um, the one thing I'm afraid of that game is, like, everything's going to... Regardless of what happened, Like, you know, the illusion of choice. Doesn't matter what options you, you pick. Everything's going to be the same. And that'd be okay if, like, you know, you make different picks and you get a different buff. Yeah, that's mechanically similar to another boss, but in a different sequence. You know, like mm -hmm. in chapter eight, you fight a you fight a giant fat ass that uses fire attacks. But depending on your choices, you fight the giant fat ass in chapter three instead. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. But from what I've seen, I haven't watched that much footage of it. But it's not as flexible as like a Final Fantasy Tactics, right? It's a little, it's a little more constrained, but okay. It, but like e each not... character is their own kind of class or thing, and they have subclasses, and you could mess around with them, right? That is correct. Okay, I'm into that. Yeah. So if for if for six flexibility by giving you more character going on. Have you uh, played John Dark for the PS? Did you have a PSP? No, no. Uh, my parents love me. They bought okay. me a Nintendo DS. Uh, Jean Dark is a one of my favorite strategy RPGs, and it's one of those things where like oh, fucking a port it to something already, because <laughs> it's trapped on the PSP, which I don't mind because I still have my UMD of it and my PSP <laughs> in working condition. But it's like I'd, I'd rather just I'm already at my desk. Let me just pop it on Steam or something. I was gonna say just get a Steam Deck, but never mind. Yeah, that that is something I'm hoping to get by the end of the year. <laughs> That or a switch, switch LED, you know, one of the, one of a thing, <laughs> something I can just play on the go. I've been thinking about upgrading. Oh, guess what? What is they're Nook's making? Plan doing something? No, uh, okay. that got fixed. Um, guess what? They're Pokemon? making Ram. Uh, they're making an Endoroid Ramlethal. Oh fuck you! I have to spend eighty dollars now on a figure. <laughs> All right, the pop pop a link in the Discord. Let me see it. Um, they it's it's been announced. They don't they don't have a mock up yet. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, and then yeah, I'm at the good smile. I'm looking over the good smile stuff because apparently they just had like an announcement a bunch of other other things. Oh yeah, I, I keep my finger. I generally have my finger on the pulse of some of those toy festivals. <laughs> that um, in Japan. Yeah, they sh they showed uh Demi Fiends like Figma like colored up and he looks great. Are you getting that? Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm. Thinking about it, my first commission check is coming up, and I already have. Uh, I'm trying not to pull the trigger on the R on the real grade uh, new Gundam Titanium finish. Oh. So the thing with Figma is, they're expensive as shit, but then when you see like American action figures that are like twenty dollars, the difference in quality is clear between twenty and sixty. Well, not only that, not only that, it's also like just. The amount of details that Figma put into their stuff and like um, 
I don't know. I just like I'm just thinking back of like those fifty dollar like American action figures of like Batman and or Spawn, and they just have like a certain like dreaminess to them that looks mm-hmm. like shit. And then I'm thinking of the Sekiro Figma that it still has that kind of st- of like dirty aesthetics, but it looks fucking great, dude. Uh, and it, oh and God. I think and I think it's just because I'm a weeb. I think that might be the real issue there. Yeah, cause Probably. I had some of those like McFarlane figures back in the uh, in the '90s, where they had some, they had like the weird griminess, but like the attention to detail was ridiculously spot on. Mm-hmm. It, it, it existed a... in like a weird. Some of those figures existed in a weird, uncanny valley <laughs> of figures. Like, Especially the female character, like they they were scary looking to me. I think her name was Angela or some shit like that. Have we gotten to the biggest news of the direct yet? Uh, brief footage of Cuphead Delicious Last Chorus, or are we talking uh, Metroid Dread uh, new difficulty modes? Uh, uh, Metroid Dread. Yeah, those are free, aren't they? They are. Uh, Dread mode. And, uh, oh my god, I finally got the armor I wanted. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm Hell so yeah. happy. Uh, I could cosplay as Agrius now. Um, it is all worth it then. Oh hey, they're making a Earthbound and Earthbound ever... Zero coming to uh, old Switchy. I. Oh, Earthbound Beginnings. When did they change that? Like throughout uh, Wii, me, my... Wii U, digital uh, Wii U. Con- whenever they release in the Wii U, they switch it to Beginnings. Okay, because throughout my, my entire life. I've heard Earthbound Zero, and then watching this direct, I'm like, wait, when did they start calling it Earthbound Beginnings? They switched out to Earthbound Beginnings just because, uh, from my understanding, not from my understanding, I played the fucking thing. It's harder. Uh, I know it's well put together as like actual Earth, uh, like Earthbound. So, what I'm guessing is that they call it Earthbound that way people play Earthbound first, and they call Earthbound Beginnings, kind of like retroactively going back to it. Okay. So they're already accustomed to the mechanics of Earthbound. That's correct. Yeah, because uh, the the first one is rough. Uh, not only like on the difficulty level, it's also like certain mechanics were still trying to get figured out, and they just got tuned out by Earthbound. Are you one of those fools who has reignited hope for uh, Mother Three being uh, brought over? Nope. There's a perfectly well translated ROM that you can download. Just fucking play that. Uh, we cannot endorse piracy here. You mainly might not, because I mainly because Nintendo is super litigious. But would I ever admit that I have uh, AM2R on my computer? Never. <laughs> Never. Never. That's not a thing you've I'm done. Like to that. You're yeah. just an outstanding citizen. I would never, ever have a ROM of a Nintendo game that Nintendo is going to legally take down and then try to sell it back to the people oh hey um i forget uh walter do you ever play helltaker no okay never mind then uh they just announced a nendoroid of my favorite girl but yeah whatever okay um yeah did we talk about this already the mario kart 8 booster course pass 24.99 baby we were gonna we were gonna talk shit about it oh i think it's great honestly uh, okay I, let's let's talk about this baby i just rather I, have mario kart sorry i just rather have mario kart 9 but this ostensibly is mario kart 9 like with that amount of content that they're adding on 48 new tracks eight courses over six different seasons or it's, packs or it, whatever. it's gonna go into late 2023 so it's content for the next yeah. year two years because the, the rumor was that like oh they're working on a new mario kart and then it's like nope they're just working on a stupid amount of dlc for mario kart 8 which i, I think that's i think it's a great package man 48 courses is essentially mario kart 9 I feel indifferent about it but at the same time it could have been mario kart 9 they could have just you know done the new courses but maybe it's because they don't have enough ideas to reinvent um like make a new game kind of make it There's fresh no point to make a new game because it's going to be mechanically the same no no that's mm-hmm. what i'm saying yeah. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. So we're on the same page for that aspect yeah. of just... But I mean, if, and if also you are you have the expansion pass already, right? Because you wanted to play I'll the N sixty four games. Well, yeah, so you free, yeah you get, get that free, yeah. you get a whole another game's worth of content for free if you're already paying for the that service. But it's an amazing deal, man. Oh, sorry, I'm looking over at the Good Smile uh, Twitter. Stone there figures. are <laughs> Rado. Uh, Kuzunoha? Have you played? Yeah, from the SMT series, they're yeah, they're making I'm a big map. Oh, yeah. hell yeah! I'm definitely gonna be buying that one. Won't be I'm sold fuck... in Korea. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're right. They switched it over to Dante. I forgot. Yeah, because he has a uniform that they associate with genocide, rightfully so. Those thing old Japanese. Uh, goddamn but, Japanese girls. That Billy. But I didn't do anything. Yeah. It's not my fault, I swear. <laughs> he was just following orders. I was yeah. just following orders, man. I was just following orders. Yeah, but... Uh, talking about, talking Mar- about Asian genocide and following orders, have you watched The Act of Killing? No, oh, of course. Yeah, it's super fucked up. That is <laughs> my... Yeah, it's super fucked up. It's really... Billy, it's a good doc. Yeah, Billy, if you're in a situation where you have to follow order, watch The Act of Killing and then reconsidering follow orders. Yeah. Well, it's all good. You can have a laugh afterwards, like in 20 years. Yep, in 20 years, and then you just, you know, it kind of just hits you out of nowhere. Yeah, just drinking with your buddies, like, yeah, we did some fucked up shit, yeah. right? <laughs> all right. Yeah, um, and but, then you stare blankly into space. Yeah. I was just really excited about the announcement not breath of the wild 2 <laughs> xenoblade chronicles 3 baby yeah those games are well regarded they're, they're one kind day of... i'll play one of those games the reason i i have been resistant to play them is because they are the epitome of that jrpg mind that jrpg mentality of we need to make something as bloated as possible and a combat system as as too obtuse as possible. I just I tried playing the second one when it came out for Switch because I was like, oh, this is a game I've never played before. I've oh. never heard of it. Let me give it a shot. And I just I could not get into it. Oh, it's so the combat system is so complicated. I tried to I tried to get into them because uh, them creators Zeno uh, Zeno Zaga yeah. so. Like I was excited, and uh, I heard, and it was like good. the original and the Wii was like really well reviewed. Um, so when it came out in the 3DS, I was like, oh, I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna enjoy it. They didn't like it. My buddy let me borrow my his Wii U that way I could play Bayonetta 2. And then he was like, dude, you should check out Xenoblade. Um, the one for the Wii U is gonna be great. They didn't like it, and apparently that's the shittiest one. Xenoblade, I hear that's the best one. The Wii U one? Not the, oh, Xenoblade Chronicles X? No, no, no. I, yeah. X is the worst one. I hear the first no. one's the best one. No, that's that's exactly like I didn't I didn't enjoy my time with the first one. I oh, didn't okay. enjoy it with the worst one. See, my uh, with... And then my buddy was like, "You should check out the second one, man. It's gonna be great." I was like, "No." So what I did, I watched all the special attacks on YouTube. I was like, "Okay, I don't care." Xenoblade Chronicles. What turned me off when I first saw it is, oh, this looks like Final Fantasy XII, which I fucking hate. <laughs> but I, um, maybe or maybe I didn't uh, bid on this for my fantasy publisher, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Who knows? The first uh, one was in the, or Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was in the mid-80s, so... I wanted to bet on it because, like, regardless of how I care about the game, that game critically is going to do well. Yeah, bit, t- take a bid on it, baby. Do it. Uh, we have uh, two days before bidding closes, so. I'm going to do that right now. How much are you going to bid on it? Don't tell me because I will change it, my bid, based on what you tell me. What? I'm not going to say would what you... I bid. No, what do you bid on? Oh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Oh, nice. If it doesn't get pushed out of September to next year, it is well, a good um, thing. 
I don't. Be, I don't believe so. Those games have like have steadily been like consistent on their release dates. Yeah. I wonder with that being a fall release now, that makes me feel like Breath of the Wild Two is going to get delayed, or they're going to do a surprise direct and it's going to get released during summer. No, I they, think Nintendo doesn't shadow drop. No, nope. and because they were like, oh yeah, this they said yes uh, before the direct. Hey, it's going to be 40 minutes about the first half of the year. And then they announced that coming out towards the end of the year. I was like, oh, well, hey. Breath of the Wild getting delayed then. No, they're, they're, you still have two months before November, which is the peak game release time. So I think it's going to, I honestly Wild. think, because what is the September? Unless they have a big drop. Or like another big announcement that we're gonna be waiting for summer. I think Breath of the Wild Two has is gonna be like a March release for next year. I hope not for my team. Yeah, I was about to say that's on your team. But my, my my issue with my publisher right now, my fantasy publisher is Warner Brothers. Just confirm whether or not Suicide Squad is going is being delayed into twenty twenty three. Also confirmed that Harry Potter Legacy and Gotham Knights is coming out this year, so you could bid on Harry Potter. Well, again, like just with the Bloom- Bloomberg report, just like, all right, Bloomberg is not often wrong with these rumors and leaks and whatnot. So Warner Brothers, just come out and say it if it's going to be delayed, so I can drop this game already. Just say right. it. Just say it, man. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just, but you know, fantasy publisher problems aren't real problems. They're right, exactly. They don't care about our yeah. little fantasy league. Uh, they should, but they yeah. don't. We have the fingers on the pulse of the game. The fingers the in nerd. the pulse. I'll finger anything with a pulse. All right, come on over. Yeah. I did accidentally bought the sex loves. The what? The, the the gloves that they use in all on all the BDSM movies. I bought the gloves. The gloves? Yeah. What gloves? Never mind. I'm not gonna get into the discussion. <laughs> hey man, we're not we're not like king like shaming or anything. Rubber you know? gloves? What kind of? We just, we just don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I bought I bought the 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 rubber gloves. Like you know. Okay, so you know. So I buy gloves that way I can fucking paint my Gundams and I don't stain my hands and then I stain other things. Yeah, obviously. But are, are there specific uh, sex gloves? Are they like textured the... for pleasure? Well, uh, no. How are they different? No. Are they, they are just gloves? No. These are the same brand that all those uh, kink videos use. It's not specific. It's actually made for um, um, lab, for lab work. So they're just gloves, um, man. What are you? Come on! What are you? They're just black, tight. They're just black. They're tight, and they're also latex gloves. Yeah, and... I've got a box of those. Mine are purple. Yeah, yeah but mine like, are purple. yeah, but I accent, but like, it looks like I accidentally bought the exact same brand that they use. So I'm just like, oh, cool! I have the right. sex gloves now. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, you throw that word right. in front of things, and you make it, you, you tease that your statement's gonna be more exciting than it actually is. Again, we're not judging. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. How dare how dare you tease us? Yeah, yeah. By having regular gloves. No, but I'm saying like these are the exact same brand that all those uh fucking corn corn companies use. I'm just like, oh, that's funny. Okay. But when you said sex gloves, I thought there would be like. They're for sex. They'd be have bigger tips, so it's more uh, yeah, like, thought... more like a head, and they'd be textured. <laughs> they. They just like vibrate. Yeah. You, them you get like a, a vibrating ring built into the glove. I'm not gonna lie. I thought you got like flesh, flesh, uh, some flesh uh, gloves, man. Yeah, You're like a flashlight, but for gloves. Yeah. I was gonna say that's just my skin. Flesh gloves are your skin, Billy. Oh, I like the idea. Or like another person's just, like, skin. <laughs> there you go. And I make it act up like Kirby right now. Yeah. Anyways. But that's it for the Nerdington Post. We're going to keep talking about sex gloves. 